Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Acer C7 Chromebook, which is a $199 laptop that basically has the guts of a cheap Windows laptop, but instead it's a Chromebook, meaning it's designed to run uh, Google Chrome OS. It's got a 1.1 gigahertz Intel Celeron 847 processor, 2 gigs of RAM, a 320 gigabyte hard drive, and an 11.6 inch 1366 by 768 pixel display. Uh, most importantly, you can see it resumes from sleep almost instantly, boots in about 20 seconds. That's slower than some models because this has a hard drive instead of a faster solid state disk, but 20 seconds is still pretty good compared to a Windows, Linux, or a Mac laptop for the most part. Um, you can see that we can basically run the web browser. We can do Windows side by side or in full screen. It handles uh, video playback pretty well. And so we can do high definition videos from YouTube, Google Play Movies, Netflix, and other online video sources. Look, it's the Acer C7 Chromebook. Now, one of the things that's kind of neat about this particular model, as you can see in this video that I'm watching, is that in addition to running Google Chrome OS, you can run Ubuntu on it. And that's basically because it does have the guts of a regular laptop. Uh, you could theoretically also install Windows 7, but there's some BIOS tweaking that you need to do in order for that to work properly. Um, so out of the box, it's really going to ship with Chrome OS, but if you want to run a different operating system, you can. Now, one of the big disadvantages to running Ubuntu is that you get about 2 hours, 15 hours, of, uh, two hours, 15 minutes of battery life in Ubuntu, whereas I'm getting about 4 hours of runtime using the 37 watt hour battery that comes with this with Chrome OS. So it's really optimized for Chrome OS, although it can run other software. Uh, also optimized for Chrome OS is the keyboard, which includes uh, not just the typical keys that you'd find on most laptops, such as the caps lock key, which is missing from some Chromebooks, or F1, F2, F5, F11, etc., but you have some dedicated keys, such as the search key, and there's actually two of them, and that brings up the on screen app menu with a search bar, and then there's browser buttons. You've got refresh and back and forth and so forth, as well as your typical function keys like brightness, volume controls, and so forth. So it's um, you know pretty clearly designed for that purpose. And the touchpad, not the largest, but it works pretty well. There's there's no right-click button. Instead, to context click, you or to, or to open a context menu, you tap with two fingers at once. You can scroll up and down using two fingers or even left and right also using two fingers. Um, so in terms of responsiveness, uh, compared to other Chromebooks, it's pretty hard to tell the difference. Uh, you know, even though this is the cheapest Chromebook, it's almost as fast as the Samsung Series 5 Chromebook, uh, which sells for $450, more than twice as much. It's a little bit faster than the $250 or $249 Samsung Series 3 Chromebook, which has an ARM-based processor instead of an Intel processor. Um, that model is a little bit thinner, lighter, gets better battery life, but uh, and that's why it costs more. But this guy is a little bit faster and it's a little bit more versatile because it has that large hard drive and the, the normal keyboard layout. Really, basically what Acer did here is they they took one of their inexpensive Windows laptops and they loaded it up with Chrome OS as an alternative to um, Windows. Now to show you something here, I'm going to go ahead and fire up the Google Play Movies app. Switch to 720p, go full screen. And it looks pretty good when viewed directly from the front. Viewing angles, although you've got some sort of glare because of the glossy screen from the sides, viewing angles are pretty good from side to side. The laptop has a screen that goes back almost 180 degrees, which is kind of nice, but the viewing angles side to si or, uh, from front to back are really not as good. The colors start to wash out, and it starts to look like you're viewing a photo negative. So... That's, uh, that's not unusual for relatively inexpensive laptops, but it's something to be aware of. In terms of the rest of the hardware, let's take a quick look around the sides. We've got two USB 2.0 ports, a headset jack, and a power jack. Removable 37 watt hour battery. VGA, Ethernet, another USB port, so there's a total of three, and HDMI output. On the front, there is an SD card slot, which you can use to copy files to and from the device. Uh, with a 320 gigabyte hard drive and a browser-based operating system, you're not going to be downloading lots of um, 
apps to the device. Uh, it doesn't run Photoshop, it does not run Office, it only really runs web apps. Uh, so the 320 gigabyte hard drive really should provide plenty of space, but it's nice to have this for copying files to and from. You can pop it out of your camera, for instance, and put it right in here and view your, uh, your photos. The uh, bottom has this one large panel and a little sticker that says warranty void if broken. That's because you open this up, you can access a screw, lets you take off this panel. And from there you'll notice the 320 gigabyte hard drive can be swapped out, replaced with a larger one if you really for some reason need more uh, storage, or a faster one. So if you wanted to replace it with a solid state disk you could do that. Sort of defeat the purpose of buying a $199 laptop to spend hundreds of dollars on an SSD, but you can do that if you want to. There's also two RAM slots, uh, memory sticks slots. So basically you've got two gigs of memory already built in here or um, uh, uh, ships with it. You can pop that out and put a larger one in. You can put a large, uh, you can put a one gig, two gig, five, twelve megs, whatever you want in the second slot uh, to increase your performance um, by increasing your RAM. So it comes with two gigs. Um, probably would perform a little bit better with 4 gigs, and it can actually handle, even though Chrome OS is a 32 gigabyte, or a 32 bit operating system, it can actually handle up to 16 gigabytes of RAM. I don't know that you would ever need that much, but it's nice to know you have the option. Uh, for most day-to-day -day tasks, you know, as we mentioned, it boots quickly, uh, it loads web pages just fine. Um, you know, a lot of people, I don't think you would need more than the 2 gigs that comes with it, but if you plan to use this for any sort of serious work, 4 gigs would really really be nice. And that's because the browser basically runs in RAM most of the time. And I noticed that when I open up, say, 8 to 10 browser tabs and start switching back and forth between them, um, sometimes it, it uh, removes one or two of those tabs from memory. So when I switch back to the first tab, it might have to refresh the page. And what that means is, uh, during the uh, one of my days testing this, I decided to uh, use it as my primary work laptop. I can sort of get away with that as a blogger, because I mostly need a research window, I had a window open for listening to uh, music, I was looking up things on a couple of different websites all at once, and then I was using WordPress, which is an online application for updating my website. What would happen though is if I navigated away from the WordPress page for too long, and you know, left that window open or that browser tab open and was using other things, uh, Chrome would allocate the memory from that tab to something else. And then when I would come back, it would refresh the page and possibly lose any unsaved data. So having more RAM means that's not going to happen as often. Um, but again, for the most part, for a lot of people, I don't think that it would be a big problem. Um, really the most impressive thing to me, I think, about this laptop or any Chromebook is the fact that it turns on almost immediately. Actually, at that point, it hadn't even turned off yet. Um, but let's go ahead and turn it back on. And what that means is that you can grab it the, the same way that you would uh, a tablet or a smartphone um, at a time when you might want to grab a laptop to get some work done, but you don't want to have to wait for it to boot Windows and connect to the internet. This thing is almost instant on, and that means that you can grab it to check your email quickly and then close it when you're done. And it has the advantage of having the full keyboard so you can respond to emails in a much more detailed way than you might want to do on a tablet or on a smartphone. Um, for some people who do almost everything that they do online, I think a Chromebook might make sense as a replacement for a full-fledged laptop, especially an inexpensive model like this for $199. But the nice thing about the price is it also works pretty well as an extra device. So you already have a laptop, you already have a desktop, and sometimes you, uh, you know, your spouse, your kids, somebody else is using it, and you want just something quick to get online, or something to hand them so they can get online. This makes sense for that. Or maybe it's just you. Maybe you live alone and you already have a primary uh, computer, but you don't want to have to go and boot it up and wait for everything to uh, start working all the time. This makes a nice uh, couch surfing companion. You can just look something up, check your email, close it, put it away, and uh, treat it much like a tablet with a keyboard. So I think when Chromebooks tended to cost $400, $500 and up, uh, it was kind of hard to justify buying them as an ancillary device. At $200, I think it makes a lot more sense. So this is the Acer C7 Chromebook. It's an interesting tinkerer's toy for those who are looking to install Linux on it. It's an interesting device for uh, those who are primarily interested in running web apps and uh, maybe already spend most of their time on a computer in a web browser anyway. And it's an interesting device for somebody looking for an extra device. Um, it's not for everybody. It's definitely not for everybody. But at $200, it's uh, much easier to recommend than it would have been had it cost as much as the earlier Chromebooks, which were selling for twice as much. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.